Hi. So, this is, I'm trying something new today. This is my attempt at Dark Academia. It's not very Dark Academia, but it's still a cute outfit, so we're gonna go with it. So what's happening today is slight change of plans, because I had bought two meters of white cotton to use for an 1890s blouse. Shirtwaist is the technical term, but um, turns out I really hate the way white looks at me. It makes me look very dead. So we're not going to go with that. And instead, to not waste the fabric, I'm going to make an 1890s nightgown instead. Um, just a quick background, I'm still wearing the pyjamas that I received for Christmas when I was 14. I am now 21, which is getting slightly out of hand. So I'm going to make a fancy nightgown and pull out my book of patterns. I got this book for Christmas. And on the literal last page is this pattern for an 1893 nightgown. And that's what we're going to be doing today, so we don't waste any fabric. Hopefully it will be enough fabric, we'll see, fingers crossed, but yeah, that's what we'll be doing. Quick side note. Hello Fox. Welcome to watching the pain of a social science student, realising that she needs to unearth the maths she was hoping to never use again. I am using the book Authentic Victorian Fashion Patterns, A Complete Lady's Wardrobe by Christina Harris. In order to scale up the patterns, I am attempting to use the grading method suggested in the book. However, in hindsight, I have done this incorrectly. The book suggests to make the standard size sloper first and then alter the sloper according to your measurements. Instead, I tried to scale up according to my measurements straight away, and as you will see later, I have found some size discrepancies between the different pieces. Needless to say, those discrepancies should not be there if I had done the method correctly. This could be either because I misread the instructions, or I'm just very, very bad at maths, which is probably the latter to be honest. This was all fun and games, but now I honestly have no idea how I meant to lay this out on the floor, on the fold, and cut out as many pieces. This pattern, this monstrosity, is the length of my entire room floor. Which you can either see as my room is really tiny, or I'm suddenly really tall. Welcome to what happens when the ironing board is broken. Will I burn my bed? Probably. Following the theme of everything breaking, my ironing board cover has shrunk, how? I don't know, and no longer fits the board. My brain, with its unlimited logic, instead of covering the board with some other cloth, has decided to iron on top of my bed instead. Do not recommend. I slightly singed my duvet, not exactly ideal. But bottom line, the fabric is ironed, and we can proceed. So update. Turns out, because I ordered it for a shirt waist and not a nightgown, I'm actually about a metre short of fabric. I have enough fabric for the main body of the nightgown, but not enough for the sleeves. So I ordered extra fabric, but um, the postal service is vaguely not working. So I'm expecting it in about, hopefully within the next week, because it was meant to arrive last week and it didn't. So that's fun. Love delays. I'll just have to start working on what I have left. Mm -hmm. 
so I made a mistake and I'm not sure where focus so when I was making the pattern somehow I made the yoke about a size bigger than the back so it's easy. I can fix it I, I, I can see where the lines are meant to be but still annoying so I realized that this project would be the best to try some embroidery with as it's just a plain white background so I was looking through this book with this book it's actually been really helpful and I really liked this design Ooh, focus I really liked this design from the pelerine but it looked a bit too complex and I don't have time for that so just try to do a simplified design still similar similar aesthetic but significantly more simple so that's what I'll be working on and that will be on the front of the yoke the pattern itself suggests that I cover the yoke with embroidery going into the arm and saying that it looks very pretty so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow the pattern's instructions and add some embroidery. So here is one panel done of the yoke. This is what the pattern looks like when it's already embroidered. Don't mind the blue markings, they're water soluble fabric marker and it'll come off in the wash. But yeah, this is just tiny little white work detail. And I think you'll just bring something, make it a little bit more special. A padded satin stitch was used on the petals, so they are slightly raised. Um, the little dots are clusters of very poorly done French knots. This is my first time doing French knots. And the correct technique eludes me, rather. And the leaves for the fern are buttonhole stitches. Buttonhole? Blanket stitches, buttonhole stitches. You know what? I'm not sure if they're just inter interchangeable names, but this is either a blanket stitch or a buttonhole stitch. Either way, that's what it looks like. And just running stitch for the stems. So, try on one complete. It's not a disaster, but it's not ideal. So this is the old arms eye of the pattern, and um, here's the new one. It's way off shoulder. So I'm going to have to shorten that quite a bit. Um, I also shortened the front by this much on both sides. And because of the actual skirt, well, skirt part of the nightgown is very wide and unwieldy, I think I'm going to do a few tucks. A few tucks under here. It's not going to affect the yoke, it's going to affect the skirting. We'll see how that looks. A historic moment now, I have decided to baste something for the first time in my life. Usually I keep the two pieces together using an ungodly number of pins, but this time I thought I'd see if basting really does make that difference. To see what happens, one side of the yoke will be basted in one side, will be kept together with the pins. As a result, I didn't really see much of a difference between the two sides, but maybe that's just because the yoke isn't exactly a very high stakes or precise piece, maybe the results would have been different in a bodice. However, I have always made my bodices using the pin method without the basting and so far they've turned out fine. So who knows, we'll see if I want to do this experiment again with a later project. Ignore the terrible lighting, as per usual. So this is what it looks like with all the side seams stitched, and the front seam as well. All that is left is to sew down the yoke and add some snaps, and it should be done. From the back, it looks like this, and again I'm going to have to attach the yoke. And that's about it, that's left to do. Apart from the sleeves, obviously the sleeves. Until last, evil. Typical. But the sleeves... The sleeves are all cut out, the seam has been stitched, 
and now I just have to gather it and put it in the armhole. Okay, we're done. While writing this voiceover, it took me a hot minute to remember the English word for cuff, but we got there eventually. To make the cuff bands, I am taking small scraps of the fabric I had left over from the nightgown, shaped them into rectangles that would be big enough to wrap around my wrists, and turned all the raw edges under so they're covered, and whip-stitched those covered raw edges together. Now welcome back to terrible sewing practice. I am running a single running stitch through the edge of the sleeve in order to gather it to the cuff size. Due to spilling raspberry syrup all over my embroidery floss earlier, parts of the flowers have suddenly turned from white to grey and purple, and as such I thought the chaos of a single gathering stitch would match the energy of my stained embroidery, and this is how I will explain this away. You know what? It works in the end, cutting corners, this is meant to be a nice, fast project. Lastly, as a last step in the sleeves, I'm attaching the covered sleeve to the cuffs by whip stitching it on. I am actually doing this properly for once, I am doing a double whip stitch for security, and hopefully this means that I won't rip as easily, and so far it's been working fine. I've worn it a few times already to sleep, and the cuffs are staying on perfectly. Overall, I've had some doubts along the way, but this ended up to be one of my favourite projects so far. It's come out so cute. I don't know why these nightgowns ever went out of style. They are so comfy, proper dramatic. I feel like a ghost in my own house, and frankly I recommend that to everyone. And it was quite easy to make, apart from my um, terrible patterning skills. It's been quite fun. it's been quite alright, and I do definitely recommend making it yourself if you want to. The drama is unparalleled.